Paraneoplastic syndromes can be described in the following ways. They can develop when a cancer of any type releases a substance, a hormone or protein, which affects a certain body system. This is known as hormone-related paraneoplastic syndrome. Or when the body's immune system releases a substance, an antibody, which is meant to kill the tumor, but also damages healthy body cells. This is the body's autoimmune response, and this is known as humoral paraneoplastic syndrome. However, the exact mechanisms remain unclear. Hormone-related paraneoplastic syndromes occur in up to 15% of all patients with cancer. This incidence includes those diagnosed with a functioning neuroendocrine cancer. The following list may occur in any cancer, including non-functioning neuroendocrine cancers. Hormone-related paraneoplastic syndromes that may occur in any type of cancer include hypercalcemia, Cushing's, Ectopic adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, syndrome, is similar to Cushing's. Syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, or SIADH. Humoral paraneoplastic syndromes are rare, affecting less than 1% of all patients with cancer and most commonly present as neurological and or dermatological syndromes. For example, Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome is a very rare condition that may occur in association with cancer, notably small cell carcinoma of the lung. It affects the signals sent from the nerves to the muscles, which means that the muscles are unable to tighten or contract properly, resulting in muscle weakness and a range of other symptoms. Cancer-related structural complications. These include vascular complications such as thrombus or embolism or are related to the growth or invasion by a primary tumour or its metastases into surrounding tissues or structures. People with cancer have a higher risk of developing blood clots. Researchers think that up to 20 out of every 100 people with cancer develop a blood clot at some point. Blood clots can develop in different parts of the body. When a blood clot forms in the deep veins of the leg, it is called a deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. Part or all of a DVT can break off and travel around the body. It may travel through your heart to block part or all of the blood supply to the lungs. If this happens, it's called a pulmonary embolism. DVTs and PEs together are sometimes called venous thromboembolism. Superior vena cava syndrome. Partial or complete obstruction of blood return from the head and neck to the right heart, either by compression or a blood clot. Gastrointestinal bleeding, vomiting blood or passing blood in your stools. This may be due to irritation of the lining of the gut, cancer growth into and beyond the lining of the gut, and or the use of blood thinning medications, anticoagulants, such as aspirin, heparin or warfarin growth and or invasion by primary or secondary metastatic cancer. Cancer emergencies may include malignant spinal cord compression. This happens when pressure on the spinal cord stops the nerves working properly. This can happen if your cancer has started in or spread to the bones that make up your spine. The bone affected may collapse, trapping or pressing on the spinal cord or the cancer within it might grow beyond the bone and press on or invade the spinal cord. Acute or emergency symptoms may include severe or increasing numbness between the legs, inner thighs and back of the legs, severe pain and weakness that spreads into one or both legs, making it hard to walk or get out of a chair, and or loss of bowel or bladder control. Cord equina syndrome is a rare but serious condition that describes extreme pressure and swelling of the nerves at the end of the spinal cord. It can develop quickly with sudden severe symptoms, but may also develop slowly 
with early symptoms that often mimic other conditions. Symptoms may be similar to those of spinal cord compression. Malignant obstruction of airways, bowel, bile ducts, and or ureters. This can happen when the cancer blocks the normal structure of the airway, bowel, bile duct, and or ureter. Obstruction may be partial or complete, disrupting normal function, leading to a number of mild to severe symptoms that may require emergency medical review and intervention. Malignant effusions. An effusion is the abnormal collection of fluid in hollow spaces or between tissues of the body and can occur within the lungs, heart and or abdomen. For example, a pleural effusion is a buildup of fluid between the layers of tissue that line the lungs and chest cavity. The amount of fluid can vary, but if it increases, it can press on the lung, which are then unable to expand fully when you breathe. 